Saskatoon, the panoramic view. The panoramic photograph provides a valuable record of Saskatoon's early growth and rapid expansion. With the development of panoramic cameras, photographs were able to cover horizontal feuds of view from about 180 degrees to a full 360 degrees. The chronicling of Saskatoon's boom years was perfect for this medium, which allowed the photographer to show in detail the city's expansion. In addition to being a visual record of urban growth, panoramic photographs often served as mementos of special festive occasions. Using images from the Local History Room's collection of panoramas, this exhibition documents both these aspects of the panoramic photograph. The broad sweep of the South Saskatchewan River and the domestic structures and other buildings along Spadina Crescent are visible in this view taken from the Nutana bank of the river. Much of the downtown area had sprung up during the period from 1910 to 1913, Saskatoon's boom years. The structural framework of St. John's Cathedral and other partially completed buildings in this 1913 panorama testified to this period of rapid growth in building construction. The roller rink, the YMCA, St. Paul's Cathedral, and Knox Presbyterian Church mixed with the homes of some of Saskatoon's prominent citizens along Spadina Crescent. The reputation of St. Paul's School of Nursing and the availability of positions in the profession meant that by 1925 more and more qualified young women sought to enroll in the nursing school. St. Paul's Training School for Nurses had opened on November 21, 1909, under the direction of the first superintendent of nurses, Sister Marie du Saint-Sacrement. The initial class of three young women and two nursing sisters had graduated in September 1911. The former residence of Dr. J. H. C. Willoughby, seen at the left of the photograph, had been purchased by the Grey Nuns and converted into Saskatoon's first permanent hospital in 1907. In 1925, it served as living quarters for the student nurses. The three-story brick hospital building directly north of the original building and facing Avenue P had officially opened in November of 1913. A three-story north wing was added in 1924 and opened in January 1925. The panorama also shows the bronze statue of the Sacred Heart of Montmartre, which had arrived from France and was installed on the roof on November 26, 1924. When Charles Wentz took over the H. L. Martin Lumber Company in 1925, the company became the C. H. Wentz Lumber Company. The Nutana branch at 618 10th Street had been built in 1919 by H. L. Martin in response to the booming construction business. Joe Mighton, who had worked as a manager for the Martin Company, joined C. H. Wentz at the time of the takeover. Identified as the man in the suit and hat at the right of the picture, J. A. Mighton became the manager of the Nutana branch. In addition to building supplies, C. H. Wentz was an important coal and wood dealer, as the horse-drawn delivery wagon filled with coal testifies. In 1916, James O. McCallum bought out the transfer business of G. W. A. Potter and created the Saskatoon Cartage and Warehouse Company. McCallum and his partner, L. D. Peterkin, possibly the two gentlemen at the center of the photograph, operated the company until shortly after the Second World War, when the company was sold to McCoshams. The buildings along this block of Spadina Crescent would disappear later in 1930 to make way for the construction of the new Technical Collegiate. At the far left was the home of early settler Edward Maxwell, whose house functioned as a boarding house in the early years. Old Knox Church, at the far right, had been erected in 1900 and was the first Presbyterian church building in Saskatoon. Enlarged and added to, the building was vacated in 1914 when the new Knox opened. In 1929, the building housed the Apostolic Church.
At the time of its opening, in October 1913, the F. R. Macmillan department store was considered one of the finest in the province. Frank Macmillan, seen at the center of the picture with straw hat and arms behind his back, had purchased the Curry Brothers' business in 1912 and moved the business to the building he had constructed at the corner of 3rd Avenue and 21st Street. This 1917 staff picnic at the exhibition grounds was held Wednesday afternoon when the store was closed. From three o'clock until dusk, according to a newspaper report, staff and guests enjoyed a variety of activities. There was a game of baseball between the married and the single men, won by the latter. The bachelors were not so successful in the football game, where they went down to lasting defeat. The races of the day included the ladies' egg and spoon race, the men's sack race, ladies' needle and thread race, biscuit and whistling race. The only event to be cancelled was the potato race. Someone had purloined the potatoes. The preponderance of women indicates that many employees went to the war of 1914 to 1918. On Friday afternoon, July 1, 1927, thousands crowded the grandstand, the grounds in front, and other parts of the exhibition grounds, as the citizens of Saskatoon gathered to celebrate the Diamond Jubilee of Canadian Confederation. Among the celebrants were some 4,000 public school children. Transported to the grounds from their various schools by service clubs and volunteer motorists, the children gathered in the space across the track from the grandstand. Wearing colored caps and scarves, and coached by Edith Pillbeam, physical training instructor for the public schools, they spelled 1867, Canada, 1927, in vivid relief. At a signal, the children in the background dressed in white sat down, leaving in even greater relief the word Canada. This was the first time in the history of the city that an event of this nature had been attempted. The population of Saskatoon on Saturday, June 3, 1939, swelled to over 150,000. Huge crowds, many of whom had travelled hundreds of miles, thronged the streets to get a glimpse of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth in the greatest civic welcome ever staged in the city. When the King and Queen stepped off the royal train, they were greeted by a military guard of honour composed of the Saskatoon Light Infantry. Nearly 1,500 pioneers, visiting municipal officials, committee chairmen, and other honor guests filled the stands. Behind the military guard at the Massey Harris building, 700 high school girls wearing velvet berets and carrying flags of colored broadcloth formed a living flag. Trained in their drill by Elizabeth Hewitt and conducted by James Wart, the choir welcomed the royal visitors. Various locations were explored when the Anti-Tuberculosis League chose Saskatoon for its first tuberculosis sanatorium in the northern part of the province. Sites in City Park west of the hospital and at the university were considered and rejected before a site in Wellington Park near the Allen Bowerman estate was selected. The Saskatoon Sanatorium was designed by Maurice W. Sharon, the provincial architect, and constructed by Smith Brothers and Wilson. Completed at a cost of $550,000, the building was officially open on April 15, 1925. The nurses' residence was built the following year. The Bowerman House, constructed as a summer residence in 1907 by Alan Bowerman, became the residence of Dr. H. D. Broughton and his family when he joined the sanatorium staff as superintendent in 1925. Perched on the bank of the Saskatchewan River, the President's residence was completed in 1913. At the time of its construction, its final cost of $44,615 was twice as much as any other house in Saskatoon. While there was no public outcry about the house, 
University President Walter Murray heard a significant amount of grumbling about the so-called Presidential Palace. The house was built by the construction company Smith Brothers and Wilson to the designs of the university's architect, Brown and Valance. This Montreal firm judiciously installed only tall, narrow windows on the west side of the house by the wooded river bank, depriving its residents of the magnificent river view. Scandal and controversy were associated with the construction of Saskatoon's second traffic bridge. The R.J. Lecky Company of Regina had been given the contract to build the half-million-dollar bridge. The announcement had come during a provincial election campaign, and with it came accusations of political vote-buying. The Lecky Company had earlier constructed Knox Presbyterian Church on Spadina Crescent. When construction of the concrete bridge spanning the river at 25th Street began in 1913, it was fraught with difficulties. The collapse of the building boom, the start of the First World War, and problems with inferior concrete combined to drive the Lecky Company to near bankruptcy. By the time the bridge was completed in 1916, Lecky had been dismissed and the provincial government had assumed control of the project. Excavation on the basement for the new Eaton store at 3rd Avenue and 21st Street began on March 21, 1928. Saskatoon contractor R.B. McLeod had been awarded the contract for the excavation of the basement, believed to be the largest excavation in Saskatoon's history. Employing over 100 men and using 40 teams and trucks, as well as a specially purchased Northwest shovel, some 30,000 yards of earth were moved. Large numbers of interested spectators daily watched the large shovel at work. Two or three huge shovelfuls were sufficient to fill the wagons, and as one would leave on its way to the dump, another would take its place. It took a month to complete the excavation. The entire student body and teaching staff of Nutana Collegiate Institute posed on the adjacent school grounds at 11th Street and East Lake Avenue in the fall of 1925. Principal Aldous W. Cameron, associated with Nutana since 1913 when he helped organize the Pauline Club, and Vice Principal George A. Bonney are seated with the other teachers on chairs. Behind them on 12th Street can be seen the home of prominent real estate broker A. Leon Coyle, as well as that of Richard M. Hopkinson. The white frame building was built in 1913 by the Presbyterians, and known as Westminster Church. Church Union was linked to the Methodist, Presbyterian, and Congregational Churches to form the United Church of Canada. On June 10, 1925, three months before the photograph was taken, the congregation became Westminster United. The grassy oval, known as the Bowl, represents the center of the University of Saskatchewan campus. Included in the original plan drawn up in 1909 by Brown and Valance, this element was also contained in English landscape architect Thomas Mawson's 1913 landscape design. The bull was the only element of the design completed. This 1927 panorama shows four important buildings. Plans for the physics building were received in 1913. The lean years of 1914 to 1916 delayed its construction until 1919. The administration, or college building, was the first academic structure of the university. Its cornerstone was laid by Sir Wilfrid Laurier in 1910. Known as the Agricultural College when it opened in 1912, by 1927 it contained administrative offices, the Extension Department, Convocation Hall, the Library, and a number of classrooms. Saskatchewan Hall, the female residence built during the boom years of 1910 to 12, features decorative details and relief sculpture similar to that of the administration building. Coppell Hall, the male residence, 
displays none of these decorative touches. Constructed during the war years, its lack of decoration reflects the lack of money to spend on extras. Construction crews started work on Saskatoon's new power plant in the spring of 1929. By 1927, the growing demands upon the existing powerhouse had made it evident that a new plant was needed. The New York engineering firm of McClellan and Junkersfeld was engaged by the city to report upon the city's power situation. They recommended that a new plant adjoining and connected with the existing plant be constructed. After negotiations between City Council and the Provincial Government in December 1928, the province agreed to purchase the existing power plant and take immediate steps to build a new plant of 10,000 kilowatt capacity. McClellan and Junkersfeld were now employed to design and construct the plant. It was finished in December 1929 at a cost of $1,850,000. With the completion of the new power plant, the Saskatoon Curling Rink, seen at the right of the panorama and which had served Saskatoon curlers since 1913, would disappear. Two important Riversdale businesses stood at the intersection of Avenue A and 20th Street. Bernie's Hardware was located in the Hopkins Building, built by William Hopkins in 1907 began business as a hardware outlet in 1921, when William Thomas Bill Burney bought out the Holding Hardware Company. The King Edward Hotel was one of Riversdale's most prestigious hotels. The original structure had been built by Henry Wilson in 1908. After a fire in 1912, the hotel was renovated. Balconies were removed, and the front wall was moved out to 20th Street. The facade was altered so the exterior of the old hotel and the new addition matched. We hope you enjoyed our virtual recreation of Saskatoon, the panoramic view. The original gallery show was held February 1st to February 29th, 1996 prepared by Ron Jeremko with the assistance of Ruth Miller and Local History staff. We invite you to visit Local History the next time you are at the Francis Morrison Central Library.